Between 1989 and 2006, Dominique Cotrez killed eight of her infant babies. In this video, we will look at her story, we will look at the facts of her case, then I'll give you my own personal opinion. We will then move on to Michelle Kalina, who between 1996 and 2010 killed five of her infant babies. We will look at the facts of her case and I'll give you my opinion on her also and we try to discover and understand why parents or mothers in this case commit infanticide. This video is quite disturbing so please keep that in mind. If you do end up liking it, please hit subscribe. If you would like to support the channel, donation links are in the description and if you would like to talk to me directly, I do have a discord, the link is in the description. Now Dominique Cotrez was 45 years old. She was a French woman who admitted killing eight of her newborn infants in July 2010. Two of the bodies were discovered in plastic bags by new owners working in the garden of a house. This was the garden of the house Dominique and her husband Pierre-Marie Cotrez previously occupied. When police contacted the Cotrez family to question them about the discoveries, Dominique immediately admitted that the bodies belonged to two infants she had given birth to. She also told police that six more infants' bodies were hidden in the garage. All were born over an approximately 17-year period between 1989 and 2006. French prosecutors announced on July 29, 2010 that Dominique had been indicted on murder charges. Her husband, who was 47, was questioned by a judge but has not been charged at this time. Prosecutors believe he may have been unaware of the infants because Dominique's obesity concealed the pregnancies. Dominique and Pierre-Marie are also the parents of two adult daughters who are currently in their 20s. On July the 30th, 2010, a newspaper report stated that Dominique, who admitted to giving birth and then smothering eight babies over a 17-year period, is falling apart. Her lawyer, Frank Burton, said Dominique was psychologically very distressed. She was distressed and falling apart. However, she admitted to the crimes and she even helped the police discover the bodies. Now, Cotras did tell investigators that she killed the babies because she did not want to have any more children and did not want to see doctors for contraceptives. Cotras was overweight and she was able to conceal the pregnancies due to her body size. The prosecutor, Eric Vallée, went on to say, she has been plagued by this for a long time and now she is relieved. My client will be undergoing psychological tests and treatment to try and understand what pushed her to commit these murders. The lawyer speculated one reason, I believe, she could have suffered from pregnancy denial. The lawyer said that Cotrez was a nurse assistant. She comes from a conventional background, something went very wrong. One cannot spiral down into horror without an explanation. Cotrez was secretive, but always supportive of her family. The daughters went on to say, we never noticed anything. She had moments of fatigue, it's true, but she was working almost 24 hours a day. She would wake up early for her work as a nurse's home aide, and when she would return home, she would just do the housework. They described their mother as a caring person who often babysat her grandchildren. For us, it's something that no one sees on television, and it was a couple who were gardening in the former home of the Cotrets, where they noticed two babies' bodies in sealed plastic bags and called police. As word spread and reporters descended on the village, which local media have said has a population of around 700 people, residents said they were still reeling from the news. The village was called Villas Utetri, and I'm pretty sure I butchered that name. Cotrez, who grew up in that village, her parents, who were farmers, were dead. She owned a large part of the arable land in the village. Now, the babies themselves were born between 1989 and 2006, but their exact birth dates aren't known. Now, the lawyer of the husband did say that Cotrez had psychological problems from her first pregnancy. He went on to say, My client is in a deep state of shock. He had no idea about this. He has totally fallen apart. A difficult first pregnancy sparked Cotrez's actions. Because of her weight, the first pregnancy was traumatic and she didn't want to go through it again. Now, what's almost as scandalous about this case 
as scandalous as her actions is the fact that she only got nine years. This is despicable. I don't think this woman should ever be allowed out into society. If you think about it, she gave birth to eight kids, right? Well, 10 in total, but eight kids. Now, I understand pregnancy is an ordeal. I've seen it myself. It's beautiful at the same time, but it's not the same for everyone. And I can understand postpartum depression and all the difficult things women experience that us men will never ever have a clue about. I respect that. I understand. But this notion that she did not want any more contraceptives and that she just hid it from her family and the best cause of action for her was to kill these babies tells me psychologically she's just been cut off. And in my opinion, she'll be cut off from society. And if you just take it in a nutshell, a woman killed eight of her babies. It doesn't matter what the reason is. The, the context doesn't matter. That alone should ensure that this woman never ever gets released again. We now move on to Michelle Kalina. Michelle Kalina, between 1996 and 2010, killed five of her infant babies. These took place in Pennsylvania. Upon apprehension, she gave birth to five babies in her bathtub and then hid the bodies in a closet. She pled guilty to murder and was sentenced to a maximum of 20 to 40 years in prison. Four of the babies were still born, but the third born, a boy, had moved. That death was the basis for the one count of murder. Michelle Kalina, who was 46, of Pennsylvania, conceived the babies through a long affair with a co-worker and hid the pregnancies from him and her husband. She told a psychiatrist she had wrapped each baby with a towel and then stored the body in a tub or container in a locked closet. She thought four were essentially stillborn and denied doing anything malicious. The boy's body was then encased in cement and stored with the others in a cooler, tub or cardboard box in a closet. The five bodies decomposed for years until her teenage daughter found the skeletal remains last year. By then, authorities could not determine how the babies had died. Kalina, a home health aide, also pled guilty to five counts each of abuse of a corpse and concealing a child's death. She was described as an alcoholic who was intoxicated during the births and does not fully recall what took place. She also suffers from severe depression and other mental health issues. Public defender Holly Feeney sought leniency on grounds that Kalina had learned to deny reality as she endured severe physical and sexual abuse as a child. The psychiatrist who analysed Kalina during the trial suggested she put memories of the babies in a psychological closet, much as she put their remains in a physical one. Jeffrey Kalina, 54, a disabled stay-at-home father for much of their 25-year marriage, testified that he still loved his wife and would have raised the love of his children had he known about them. Throughout questioning, he said their marriage had not been sexual in 18 years and said he had not seen his wife naked during that time, when she carried babies to full or nearly full-term births. Only once, in 2003, did he suspect his wife might be pregnant, but his daughter rejected the idea. Kalina went on to deliver that baby at a Reading hospital. She told the staff she was separated and gave the girl up for adoption. DNA tests showed that the girl is also the lover's child. Kalina had gone to Albright College for three semesters before getting married in 1986 at the age of 19. The couple's first child, Andrew, was born the next year but suffered from cerebral palsy and serious development delays. Jeffrey Kalina blamed the problems on a bad delivery. Michelle Kalina cared for the boy at home for seven years before her husband was laid off and became the caregiver to Andrew and their daughter Elizabeth who was born in 1991. Andrew unfortunately died of natural causes in 2000. Kalina sometimes worked 70 hours a week or more to support the family. Now she actually started the affair with the co-worker in 96 and became pregnant later that year. The co-worker declined to testify in court or attend any of the hearings. He also at one point refused Kalina's request to use condoms during their affair. Now if we look at both cases, they're very similar. The main difference is one committed eight, the other committed five. I guess in the case of Michelle, you could argue that her upbringing and her life was a bit more difficult than Dominique's. However, 
there's no justifying these actions. In the case of Michelle, she was sexually abused, allegedly, and then her husband did have physical conditions. Her son was born with conditions who tragically died and no parent should ever have to see their children die. She then has an affair because she has her own physical needs that her husband could not provide. That in itself, right? I mean, that's, that, you hear that every single day. Damn it doesn't. It happens all the time. However, killing the babies, I will not understand. She probably felt ashamed and wanted to hide it from her husband. I'm sure that played a part. But there is no justifying in any way, shape or form in the case of Dominique or in the case of Michelle in killing these babies just have a look at the mental the i mean how do you even live with that right if my son cries i can't help but run to him i'm sure with your nieces or nephew or with your kids right or your friends kids or whichever children you interact with when a child is crying when a child looks needy when a child wants something you can't help inside of you but to give it to them and when you give it to them there's so much joy that comes with that therefore in the cases of dominique and and michelle yeah they of course they're insane and of course there's psychological breakdowns but considering them insane from a legal standpoint i think allows them to get away with it i think they were both fully aware of what they were doing but they just didn't care i'm sure emotionally this must have tortured them i am sure but the emotional torture is the very least that they have to endure they may have already been in prison prior to going to prison in their mind knowing this is what they did but i think we can all agree it's people like these who we wish never existed thank you for watching